I'm Cal Kellogg, and my hybrid lead core system has brought lead core trolling back into the spotlight for trout and salmon anglers all over the country. If you'd like the world's best lead core trolling rod, get on over to fishhuntshoot.com and pick up one of my iconic bright yellow lead core rods today. You won't regret it because you'll be yelling fish on tomorrow. Hey guys, Kel Kellogg here. I got a viewer question from a guy named Phil and Phil says he's part of a group called the Folsom Lake A-Team. And uh, that's actually kind of funny, man. If I was on a Folsom Lake team, it'd be like the C minus team because every once in a while I catch something out there, but mostly I get skunked. But uh, anyway, Phil, Phil shared that he's kind of depressed. Um, the lake is super, super low. The other place he likes to go is Oroville, and that's even lower than Folsom. So, you know, both of his lakes are drained. And what he asked me, he said, Cal, you've been in the, in the fishing, you know, fishing media, fishing magazine world for a long time. And uh, do you think we're losing our fisheries? And uh, that's a complicated question. And we'll, we'll start off with the narrow focus, and then we'll broaden this discussion up. And I'm going to ramble here for a for a few minutes um you know are we going to lose our trout our our landlocked you know salmon fisheries and stuff like that no we're not Th those are hatchery driven by and large fisheries and even the fish that are natural spawners in places like Folsom or Shasta or you know um Oroville in the future you know, we're going to get inflow and those fish are going to be able to spawn and reproduce. It's not going to be a great reproduction year this year. And that goes for lake fish, um, especially, you know, fall spawning lake fish, um, for delta fish, river fish, salmon, steelhead. Uh, stripers will probably reproduce okay because they're surface spawners. Sturgeon are going to have a tough time this year. Let's face it, we are in a catastrophic drought. Fish live in water, so droughts affect fish reproduction. But in the big picture, is this drought going to impact our fisheries, you know, in a devastating uh, way? No, it's not. And the fact is, you know, a lot of the salmon we catch, whether they're in the ocean or in the river, and certainly the fish in, in lakes, the trout and the salmon, those by and large are planted fish or their ancestors were planted fish and we will be planting fish in the future. Now, if you look around here at the sky today, I'm at Inglebright Reservoir, it looks like it's cloudy. This isn't clouds, okay? This is smoke. And uh, I don't want this to be a political discussion. I'll shut off the comments if I have to. And uh, let me throw a disclaimer out there. I am not some stereotypical uh, what a lot of guys would call a tree hugger, so to speak. I like to hit fish on the head with a stick. I like to blow big holes in deer with a high powered rifle. I even, when it was legal here in California, I like to shoot bobcats in the face with a, with a loaded shot from my 12 gauge shotgun. So I am definitely all about renewable resources. I love hunting, fishing. I love the woods, I love the ocean. I love all that stuff. And I think if it's properly managed, there's just an opportunity there to have healthy, sustained food for, you know, kind of infinitely. But as we draw back and we really start to look at what's going on, you know, there's areas of the Western United States that have been in a drought for 15 to 20 years. Um, we are seeing fires now in the Western United States that are bigger and more intense than fires we've ever seen in recorded history. Um, if we go across, kind of across the Pacific, there are fires right now burning in Siberia that are being reported as some of the largest forest fires in the history of, of mankind since we've been recording those kind of things. Um, to think the climate isn't changing is, is naive on a couple levels. One, Earth's climate has been changing since, since day one. It just has been. It's it's the earth. I mean, we had glaciers and we've had deserts and we had oceans where there's near now land and we see the fossils. But in the short term, in, you know, in my lifetime, has the climate changed here in Northern California? Absolutely. It is not the state I grew up in. And I think people in Oregon and Washington and Idaho and other places, 
they see the same thing. They realize that the same sort of, of thing is changing. Um, we're not getting the weather like we used to. We're getting higher average temperatures than we used to, and we're getting less rainfall on average than we used to. You know, when I was a kid in the 70s, we would have the occasional, you know, dry year or drought type conditions. Now it seems like we have the occasional wet year and we have a lot of dry years and some average years. So I think the landscape here, not just in California, but all across the West and in parts of Europe, the landscape is changing. Now you can debate all day long whether it's it's a natural cycle or it was caused by man or a combination of the two. And what about all this smoke? I mean, that's got to be adding to the greenhouse gases. The more those fires burn, the more of that smoke's going into the atmosphere. And I'm not a scientist, but I know that that's going to that's going to have a, a change, you know, on the atmosphere on what's going on. Of course, you could say in the past we had volcanoes and things like that. Absolutely, we've always had those natural processes and we've had forest fires, but it just seems to me that we are seeing some fundamental changes in the climate in the Western United States. Now, is there anything we can do about it? I don't think so. I know, I know I can, I'm out here paddling around in my kayak and it, it seems pretty futile to think that if we are in a major climate change situation that we could do anything, snap our fingers and, and reverse things. One thing you do have to think about though, is back you know, last spring into last summer, when COVID was hitting real hard, um, we saw city, city shut down production, which you know, you, you, long term you can't have that. But we had cities, like Beijing, China, and other places shut down production. And uh, from satellite imagery, we noted a, an increase or a, a, a more positive atmosphere form over those areas in a very short amount of time. So do I think the big picture is reversible? I don't know. I, I think in some instances, in some places, yeah, we can do things to kind of change what's going on. But to, to get back to the main question, are we losing our fisheries? I don't think so, but I think they're absolutely being impacted. And I think I think the, the, the scene is changing here on the West Coast. And I hope that doesn't mean that at some point, maybe during my lifetime, that salmon go in, extinct in some rivers. I, I don't know, but it's it's not looking good. I, it, there's, there's no way you can look at the at the West Coast rivers and say, man, it's it's looking great, particularly here in Northern California. It's not looking good. Um, and then you know you throw in other other stressors like like um, water exports and whatnot, and it just adds more stress to the system. So you know the bottom line is got to keep our fingers crossed we got to do what what we can do which which is minimal and uh, we really need to hope for the best we need to hope for some rain we need some rain the forecast for the coming year um, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it it is not good it is forecast as a La Nina um, which means that West Coast weather um, with the exception of some parts of Washington State they're saying there's about a 60% chance that it's going to be warmer and drier than an average year here on the West Coast. But they do preface with those numbers, I'm talking about NOAA, they do preface that at times their indicators and, and their evaluation of the environment and, you know, deep ocean temperatures and stuff like that, they, they do say that at times those are not reliable indicators of what the rainy season will be like. But by and large, they're fairly accurate. Those models are fairly accurate. And right now they're saying there's about a 60% chance of us having a drier, warmer winter than we ordinarily would have historically here along the west coast of, of you know, North America, with the exception of parts of Washington state. So we'll see if they're right. I hope they're wrong. And uh, if nothing else, I just hope we get more water than we had last year, which was just historically dry. I mean, even if we have, you know, a, a season that's drier than the average season 
please give us some snow, give us some rain, give us some more moisture than we had last year. So anyway, it's probably not what you wanted to hear about our fisheries. Um, I, I think short term in our lifetime, fisheries are gonna be fine. But I think we are facing some, some major changes to the environment that are kind of happening uh, in front of our eyes. You know, they always say it's a, it's a blessing and a curse to live during exciting times. And these are definitely exciting, scary times. We are seeing massive fires, massive flooding in some areas of the world. And uh, to me, looks like things are changing. So anyway, we'll see what happens. You just gotta keep on trolling, keep on doing what you can do. Um, if you like this kind of content, whether I'm ranting about the environment or talking about catching trout, please hit that subscribe button. We have over a thousand videos here on the channel. A lot of them are focused on trout fishing. And uh, if you're looking for trout fishing gear or any kind of fishing gear for that matter, go on over and check out my store, Fish Hunt Shoot. Dot com. Remember, fishermen will always fish. There will always be some fishing opportunities somewhere and you can't catch anything from your couch. So get out there, enjoy what we have and get your fish on. I'm Kel Kellogg.